Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. We have the Holo Health podcast back, and I'm switching seats with Trevor as I'm going to be the interviewer as your co-host. We love to switch things up for you. Um, routine is the enemy, so we're always trying to bring things new. Um, don't know if you are a Tiger King fan back in 2020. Bitch, no. Like I did. Um, <laughs> it was a train wreck. You literally couldn't uh, keep your eyes off, but sometimes I like to say, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. We have Trevor in the studio. Um, we're talking about our workouts and maximizing those. So before we kind of dive in and preface this, Trevor, um, what's your favorite color? Well, first, hey, everybody. Thanks for letting me introduce myself. <laughs> it's your boy, T-Deal. We're in the studio. What's my favorite color? Yeah, what's your favorite Black. color? No, it's not. Black is On not the good color. Lord above. No. Black is my favorite. <laughs> we, oh, okay, hold on. Time out. Before we dig into this, you are discrediting the answer that I gave you. That's not That's not a very cool thing to do, Mr. That, Kitten. That's like saying, hey, what's your favorite steakhouse? Chick-fil-A. Like, it, no, it's it is not. not. Yes, that it is, is a because, terrible parallel right there. Because black is not a track. color. We are. It doesn't matter. Black is my favorite color. What's your second favorite color? Gray. <laughs> oh you, you think I'm playing? Go look at the closet. <laughs> Anyways, hey, we did go shopping together and all you had were black or white, maybe gray shirts. So I'll give you that. I was like, wait, we went shopping. I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, guys, we are talking about maximizing your workouts. We're here at Holo Health. We do believe in living a truly healthy life, which is physical, mental, emotional, relational, spiritual. Every single area we want to pre- pursuing greater levels of health. Because if you listen to last episode, it will bring you greater levels of freedom. Hashtag shameless plug. Today, while we do believe in balance and optimization, and living a truly healthy life, today's conversation is specifically geared towards our workouts, okay? We do believe in getting 10,000 steps in. We do believe in meaningful movement. We do believe in mobility and being active. That is great. That's the foundation. But today, specifically for context, we're talking about our workouts where, yes, we have full lives. We have things that are going on that Um, don't allow us to just live in the gym and work out 24 seven. So we need to maximize that time. We need to get the best bang for our buck. We need to know what we're doing. And that's some of the things we're going to talk about. So I am actually going to ask and put Trevor on the hot seat to talk to us about some tips that he does, and then some tips in general on how we can maximize the time of the gym. So whether you go to the gym, work out at home, just like to run trails, um, do bodybuilding, you do CrossFit, do yoga, we're talking specifically about that. So Trevor, just for context, um, give us a picture, paint the picture on what you do for your workouts, where, what time, what you have, what it looks like, consistency schedule, and then we can kind of unpack some some tips to maximize that. So talk to us specifically about what you do. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Let's do it. So in terms of myself, I prefer the sport of CrossFit as my primary way to train. I also do some endurance training with different running um, or cardio machines. So that's the main form of training that I do. I tr- I do train primarily out of my garage at our home. It is a two car garage that for the record can still fit two cars in, but I just choose to park one car being errands in there because every morning I will go down there uh, after I read and spend time in the word, I'll go downstairs and most days I have an hour to exercise max an hour. There are some days that um, I have a little bit more time, but it's not always, it's never always more than an hour at one time. And so inside of that, I follow a plan that is specific to the improvements and the things that I want to, to do and to get better at in sport of CrossFit, as well as compete and overall just improve my, my physical health. And so in a typical week, I will train Monday through Wednesday. I will do an active recovery session on Thursday, which either is kind of a a slower, low heart rate bike or run or walk outside in mobility. So nothing uh, intense or weight driven. And then Friday and Saturday, I'll hit it uh, hard and fast again with two more sessions. And then Sunday, I rest completely. I, I get, you know, a good walk in, but no training at all. So that's a little snippet into 
my training, where that happens, and kind of what that looks like in a week's span. Trevor, talk to us about you specifically on your plan going in, because I would argue that I would say a majority of people can find anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes to be active for exercise. Um, but if we spend half of that time wondering or wandering, we're, we've wasted half that time and now we're only got 20, 30 minutes. So I would say, and I know you would agree that one of the tips is just have a plan to know what you're mm-hmm. going to do in that time. How do you do yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, it, it starts with what's your goal. You know, I mean, I, w- I need to understand what I want to achieve during uh, my time in the gym and what's the ultimate result that I want to see. If I just want to look good and, and, and move well, then there's some things specific to that, right? If I want to get better in the sport of CrossFit, there's some specific plans for that. If I have 20, 30 minutes and I'm just trying to do something, you know, fast and functional that will, you know, provide a lot of improvement in my fitness and help with, with the aesthetics as well. Then there's that you could do the running, the, but you know, there's so many different goals, right. But you got to hone in on what you, what you want to do. Sometimes that takes time to figure it out. And that changes too. I would say that with the seasons that does change in specific goal and intention, but the movement and, and the intentional exercise is very important. So if you establish your, your main objective or goal, you can hone in on what the plan will be, right? And there's so many different plans out there. We're, you know, obviously we have the Holo Athlete Program where we provide workouts that are geared towards people who want to maximize their time and efficiency in the gym through functional training. And so that that is a part of training that I do. I do some of the Holo Athlete Program workouts every week. I probably do about four of them. Alex does as well. And it, it falls in the scope, right? But if I'm trying to be a long distance runner, that's not for you. So you have to hone in on the goal. The second thing is put technology away. Uh, I think it is very easy to get caught up in using your phone, responding to messages, surfing social media, and it's just a waste of time. Like you, you could have done, you could have worked out less time with more intensity and gotten more out of it. You, you, you know, you could have done an extra set or two you could have done that mobility or core work that you've been wanting to do or really needing to do and so put the phone away and this attention that I try to manage you know because I I do enjoy creating and sharing content obviously we do that through holo and then our personal pages but there's a there's attention to it right you know I shouldn't be on my phone filming all of my workout there's a specific portion that maybe I want to but I'm trying to dial in right so have a plan based on your goal set aside technology and then look for little things and transitions that you can do to set yourself up well. An example would be if I know that my second piece of my workout has to do with a barbell and I can go ahead and set out the plates and set out the barbell during rest times of the first piece of my workout, then do that. Or if you know that you are going to be doing um, a workout that involves different pieces of equipment, go ahead and have that set out maybe the night before, or maybe as soon as you get to the gym, have that set out while you're warming up and let, let that be ready to roll so that you can be efficient in the way that you move. And that goes on the back end too. When you finish or as you're resting and you can put things away that speed up the back end end of your workout, do that. Because especially when I went to a gym, I noticed that the back end of my workouts felt very rushed and cut off because I had to get to the shower, had to get in cleaned off, shower, shave, clothes on, get in the car and go to work. And so there, there's some little efficiencies like that. And, um, you know, it starts with having a goal. It starts with knowing and removing technology, which is a great distraction for physical wellness and time and exercise in the gym. And then just look for little efficiencies of what you can set up or tear down as you go. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Um, as we're kind of transitioning into just some tips in general to maximize any workout, I love Mm -hmm. that you kind of gave your personal example to kind of paint the picture and create context is I love the love the tip of removing technology, because I would say that goes under the umbrella of just reducing friction, because if Mm -hmm. you have more friction in what you do, it's just going to create more unneeded energy and heat. And it's just going to rub the wrong way. And just with anything with any friction, it's not going to go smoothly. Right. So I would say another way to reduce friction is to 
plan accordingly, whether what your workouts are, but also plan accordingly with your like physical elements that you have control over, whether it's, uh, the gym bag that's packed the night before, or your clothes set out because you're work out, working out early, or it could be blocking off like a time specifically for you in your calendar. So you don't have any meetings. You don't have anybody, like if you share a calendar with your spouse or roommate or whatever that they say, okay, Hey, this is when they're working out. So I know I can like uh, rely on that. So you're getting less friction from, um, interruption, stuff like that. Trevor, anything to add on like just reducing friction in your workout regimen? Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest things that someone told me a long time ago is that Sundays is to look at your week ahead and look and, and actually block time. I like how you said it, but doing this on a Sunday because enough, you know, Sundays are more relaxing and we're getting the week set up. We're trying to, you know, rest well so we can hit, hit the ground running on Monday plan when you're going to exercise. If it matters to you, make time for it, Absolutely. make time for it. So put it into your calendar. And I, I do that, right. I do that and look at, you know, when I do majority of the time I'm training in the morning because that's when I have the most freedom to do so. Right now, if Aaron goes into a night shift or for example, today, she's working a day shift, she's not gonna be home till seven 30. That means I have a little bit of extra time after work. If I want to do an extra session or do some cardio or whatnot, but, but look at your calendar, plan what you're going to do when you're exercising. And I think that goes for a lot of different things as well. You know, I mean, for example, I've got a wedding this weekend. I know, you know, I know what the evenings and the days are going to look like. So I can look at the calendar and say, when can I get 15, 20 minutes of movement right, in? Right. Because for me, it fuels myself to be able to do other things in life and pour into other people. It's not about, I got to spend as much time as possible because just what you said at the start of this episode, I don't train two, three, four hours a day. I don't want to train three, four hours a day, maybe two, but that's still kind of pushing it. So it's really looking at the week ahead, maximizing the time that you have by making time for exercise. And if you want to keep, you know, Alex, if we want to keep going down the outside of the gym, maximize, we can too. So I would categorize our entire conversation like on probably four big tips, four big umbrellas that we can categorize most things underneath that we're talking about. One is you got to be intentional, like we're planning, whatever. We got to reduce the friction, technology, stuff like that. The other one that you touched in that's kind of I'm going to like lead off of um, is I would say the umbrella is educate yourself because let's say, for example, Trevor is going to be part of a wedding weekend for a, an extended weekend. Um, he may only have 15 or 20 minutes. If he doesn't know what to do, he's not going to do it because if the lack of information is a limiter, then actually educating yourself on what you can do to optimize that time can help you. So really just learning, taking a one, two, three, six month period to just dive deep into, okay, Hey, what are some workouts I can get the best bang for my buck? What are some at home workouts? What is, what is the reason why I squat? Why do I get my heart rate up? Just learning the benefits. And that's the beauty of what I do. I've been doing that for 10 years and just really educating myself. And now my full-time job is to educate others and coach others on what I have learned on best practices, best bang for your buck, best return on your investment, stuff like that. So talking about, let's say I only have 15 minutes. I have a list of probably five to 10 go-to workouts that really get my heart rate up. So it's almost like an included warm up in the first part of the workout. And then I really hit it hard and maybe the last five or six minutes and then I kind of stretch and cool down. So really 15 minutes, if that's all I have, I've educated myself with enough experience that I know if that's all I have, that's, that's not a limitation. That's not an excuse. I'm going to optimize my time and maximize my workout. So educating yourself, um, Trevor, any other thoughts or tips on just how education and just learning can really help maximize your workouts? You know, I mean, I think you summed it up pretty well. The only thing I would add in there is don't be afraid to ask somebody that is a little ahead of the curve with education. It doesn't mean that you're less than, or it doesn't mean that you're, you're ignorant or anything. In actuality, you, you just, you just want to learn. And so when somebody's already cut out a lot of the middle ground or a lot of the hard work on the front end, it can just point you right to the source to help you understand kind of immediately or pretty quickly, just to seek those people out. I would call them thought leaders in, in yeah. the, the physical health space. And so don't be afraid to ask. I mean, you can always ask Alex or myself or other people in your, your niche or community. Don't be afraid to ask for sure. Trevor, the last one I would kind of softball pitch to you is um, you got to take it personal. You got to take it personal. It's got to strike a a nerve in your soul. It's got to be become part of the DNA because anything that's going to be sustainable, you got to take personal, um, mm -hmm. that if you view 
your workouts, the 20, 30, 60 minutes of something you have to do, you're never going to continue doing it. It's not have to, but get to. And if mm-hmm. you really want to maximize um, your workouts there, it's shifting that perspective of, hey, I get to do this and get to steward my body well and get to be um, a good uh, temple of the Holy Spirit, whatever uh, perspective that you want to look at it. But it's got to it's got to strike a chord in your soul. Would you agree? Yeah, most definitely. And I think what is super important to that is find something that you enjoy. It, it yeah. really does not have to be what we do. It doesn't have to be what your your cousin or family does. Like you can do what you want to do. And Alex is hitting the nail on the head. Just let it be sustainable. Yeah. And if you want, like, if you want to see, if you're doing it for physical change, there's nothing wrong with that, but know that there's also physical benefit to functional and, and move, moving your body and pressing and pushing your body. There's benefits physically for that. And we're not just talking about aesthetics. We're talking about what it does for your heart, what it does for your mind, what it does for your soul, pushing your, your, your soul. Exactly. And so enjoy what you do, find something that you enjoy yes. and you will, you'll be way more consistent with it. And the thing that you'll be consistent with, you'll see the most results or satisfaction from and it in, in a sense of, you know, improvement, look, you know, from looks or aesthetics and then just quality of movement and increased quality of life. Trevor, I was going to ask you any final thoughts, but I think you just hit the nail on the head. So I'm not going <laughs> to ask again because you're exactly right. That love is a core component of sustainability, that if you should do something, you're never going to continue it. You need to love what you do. And that could be a completely different podcast topic on how do you get from should to love? How do you change that motivation, which I've actually done a deep dive in as well, which is a a fascinating topic, but not for this conversation at all. So Trevor, you black color loving you that I don't understand, but it's okay uh, because there's grace for that. Um, Trevor, last question. What is your go-to Chick-fil-A order when you go to Chick-fil-A? Two grilled chicken sandwiches with lettuce tomato and american cheese two for grilled cut. chicken sandwiches yeah dang i'm not even gonna tell you mine because that's way better than mine <laughs> and boys are feet. that's awesome trevor it's a blessing to do this thanks for sharing your wisdom and as we always say you're a legend toodles see you next time